All right. Welcome, everyone. Good to see you here. Paul Tranny here with Andrew Embry, superstar, After Effects guru. How you guys? His initials are even A-E. It's true. And show him the tattoo. Do you mind? I know it's... This one again. Boom. Yeah. That's how. That's commitment, folks, right there. It's a keyframe. It's a keyframe, right? Keyframe, roving. little, frame, little timeline. motion timeline there as well. So, Render Tom, good to have you back, buddy. Yeah. Cedric John. Sarah, thanks for joining us. I know you were here uh, when I was on last, too, as well. So, we just appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Jim, fantastic. So, this will be really good. Um, I think it's, uh, you almost look like you're in the witness protect protective program if this is like right here. So you see the, there we are. <laughs> it's like, wait, did it freeze? Just, did just half the screen freeze? Maybe. So this will be good, man. I think this is going to be fun. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of serving as your hype man. I'm just on A E yeah. or A Embry. A -Embry dot com. Com. So we'll just switch to my screen if you don't mind. Should be just the, there we go. This is just on your site, you know. Just so everybody knows who they're dealing with. The magic that is AE. My two Andrew. year old demo reel. This is, this is my point there. I think if your portfolio is super up to date, you're not busy enough. Yeah. Like you need more work. Like you should always look at your your own site and it should be out of date. It means you're just really busy. This is awesome. Yeah, that's a good thing, I guess. <laughs> Maybe, I, I don't know. Yeah. Right, Sarah? Sarah totally <laughs> knows. Cause like at the funny thing is like Sarah, myself and Oliver at the same time, we all released our same demo reels at the same time. Oh However, yeah. However, I'm a little behind this time. So, touche. Yeah, you're good. Evil Cerise, thanks so much for uh, posting those links as well. Just so everybody can check you out. So this will be fun. I'm going to dive into some After Effects. We had a good time yesterday. Really, we kind of went through a lot of your like portfolio or just like previous examples and really got to understand how you put that stuff together. And I think you, <clears throat> you is your background also in Flash too? Yeah, so out? yeah, definitely. Like my background, I'd say like if I go far enough back, like it was going, it was originally was Lightwave, 3D Studio Max, Photoshop, Illustrator, then transitioned to Flash. And this is like Flash mm -hmm. version four. And yeah, it's just crazy. <coughs> Which we got a lot of those questions earlier, like when would you use, when do other programs sign up, sort of like come into play as well? And even when I, uh, you know, at the beginning of this reel, yeah. it looked like I saw some 3D. Yeah, so that was all Element 3D. Like, like Element 3D. It was using Element 3D to be able to do the type, but then actually the very opening, that whole tunnel sequence, um, yeah, if you want to play it back again. So like that entire, like, so that was all 3D with some like flash, <laughs> extra. And then like I hand animated some stuff. But then when we get into this tunnel, this tunnel is actually just particular and it's using a motion path and we're traveling through a particular motion path. Of, this is insane. It's using, um, it's just using the circle effect. I don't of believe you. I mean, I kind of believe you, but yeah, I, I'm just like blown away. Yeah, I should probably try like... to find, if I have that file still, I'll be honest, the laptop's completely dead that I used to work on that made this. But uh -huh. But yeah, this is just particular. So it was a, it was a circle. It was a path. So yeah. it was just a, a circle shape, right? That's that right. You somehow. And I just uh, it was just a motion path with a light, and it was just like a motion path with a light from particular, and then literally just per, like uh, it kept on keeps on emitting along this path, and this path is just emitting circles, just inverted okay. circles from solids. And then I use the wave warp at different frequencies to be able to give that undulation that look. And then on top of that, use turbulent display. And then on top of that, mm -hmm. I'm adding additionally, like, so, ooh, wow, look at that. My arm cuts off. Well, <laughs> uh, so, like, it, like, some of the 2D bits are just, like, flash hand done, just extras, just for, just for fun to be able to give, like, visual things that are happening around. Wow. Well, no, so what I was asking is, like, what drugs were you on when you were doing this? I actually, it was just, like, I was, there's so much liquid animation at that time <laughs> period. And I was trying to figure out <laughs> how people were doing it. And I was like... <laughs> I like working in a non-destructive way, so this way it's like, you know, it can be extremely lucid and extremely fun. Yeah, no, it's, and I'm just thoroughly impressed, man, that's awesome. So I think you've, you've, you've probably like, I like to say you've probably forgotten more things than most people know, I feel like. You're oh, like, geez. oh yeah, I did that. I remember I did this cool technique. Yeah, so, that's it's, so well, that's cool. the thing is like, it's so crazy. Like, this is like that acorn was the first time I ever animated in Cinema 4D. I was like, oh, you know really? what? I want to see if I can actually use a 3D program. And this is going again back probably 
two, well, this is more than that, so probably three, four years ago, and it was the first time I opened up Cinema 4D, and I was like, you know, I really want to see if I can make something in cinema. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, you know, this is the most, like, simple, I guess, object I could ever use, was mm -hmm. my friend's studio called Oak and Rumble, and I was like, well, let's give it a try. Yeah, it totally, it totally works. I like just the... Obviously, the flat the flat look totally ties in well. That's just it, yeah, totally. With How to everything you're doing, and just some of these little like even here is just some some more three D. Yeah, and sometimes and you do pseudo three D. That's just it. Like that's just a sphere. That's just a sphere again. Like that's just a technique. I actually saw that on your Instagram last. Oh night. yeah, yeah. And that's that, that's all it is. And then like the submarine was that was an element again. It was just like a cinema four D that I modeled really easily. Mm. And then from that. It was just kind of rigging the arms up with nulls. My arms mm -hmm. completely cut off. It's great. So it was like, really, I'm a pirate. Um, so yeah, that was pretty awesome. It was pretty, pretty easy to be able to use with Element. And that's the whole thing. Is like, you can do 2D, 3D looking things, but with tricks the eyes, literally just that dimensional parallax shift. Because as soon as that happens, people are like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And that that does like set your stuff apart. I feel. You yeah, know? it's and you it's do it playing with the mind. How you see yeah. things in such such an elegant way, so man, totally. There's Oliver Sin. Hi, Oliver. Oh, nice. He's he's a beautiful man. Actually, I think I have. Probably think I today I got like one this. of the files is that were this, uh, uh, this. So that's using text. So again, that's using just like a text animator within obviously built in After Effects. And then if you go frame, then you see like it just pops and it becomes Element 3D mm -hmm. per character, and then they all animate towards us. Mm -hmm. And that's again just using Gaussian blur to be able to make this kind of pseudo depth of field thing happening. And hey, there's Tibbo. Mm -hmm. Simon Tibbs, Millie's here. Wow, that's cool, Simon. That's awesome. Hi guys. Sweet. They're my like my friends from England, so. Awesome. So this is a project I did with Oliver, this one, Resin.io. Actually, I think I have some of the files I brought for to that for today to be able to go through because I know people want to see stuff. So yeah, let's Yeah. We can go through a bunch of stuff and see if we have fun stuff and Yeah. Yeah, I'm go not, through all I'm, that. I'm I'm yeah, I'm sure you do. And it's I mean you have so many there's so many different different ways to go and so many different uh, you know, questions that come into my mind about this stuff. But um, yeah, so feel free if you guys have questions. I know you're you're downloading stuff, so this is good. Um, yesterday we did, you, yeah, we went through a lot of stuff, and we kind of we did have an Illustrator file at one point. Yeah, we definitely. Crack open. It, definitely, and I definitely want to go through that again. Just like literally, just breaking it down, like making it all prepped, and then we can talk about the difference between like, oh, you know, like non like non detrimental kind of turn, like changes or like yeah. how can you make things kind of organic in a way that's going to be kind of cater to <coughs> client revisions cuz let's face it we all have client revisions and client revisions are some of the hardest things to be able to deal with because you know for the most part they're not initiated so when they see something and they're not necessarily you know, like i guess educated in the techniques that's not something that's going to like they can't really visualize it so that's part of your job essentially is to be able to help walk them through that process yeah no that's good and then and hopefully set up your 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 files in a way that changes are easy at the end of the day that's something that's I've the learned. most important thing for sure and that's the thing is like it's understanding because like even myself it's like a big way to be able to find like if you're going into a project file like oof, i'm not even joking like if you go back to a project file and it's like six months or let's say you have a client that comes back it's like hey three four months back you know it's at the end of the day it's you have to be prepared for that kind of thing yeah no that's good yeah actually it looks like you have your illustrator file up so let's switch to your screen then be kind of yeah and this is not uh it's not a simple uh illustration quite frankly i mean i feel like there's yeah there's layers and layers details going on in there that's so. just it right and that's the thing is like at the end of the day it's uh, getting it all prepped and that's the thing is like at the end of the day just have to kind of like work through it as much as possible and you know that's the thing that most people go through like when we're trying to do these animations and getting files from illustrators sometimes illustrators you know, as we said yesterday, it was like they build everything in one layer, and that's that's okay if that's part of their visual process to be able to learn and try to grow from. But mm -hmm. truthfully, it's like you know when you're. It's I also kind of like it because I get to like settle down and focus on what I'm going to create and why I'm going to create that, and so that's a, a big thing. Like actually, here's a project that I, I worked on with uh, 
Lords Alessandria from Italy, and it was for um, well, for Microsoft actually. So it was contracted by a friend to be able to do some some animation for Microsoft, and mm-hmm. yeah. So like again, we got this design and kind of had to crank it out essentially. Are those individual like compositions. Down yeah, there? And that's very similar cool. exactly, and that's the thing is like you know I was able to like get through this really easily. If an yeah. <laughs> so this is and Adam. <laughs> Adam brings this up. You, you know, uh, you, you do f- all your three D stuff within After Effects. I mean, yeah, you, sh- for the you most talked part. about two different ways though. You were like Cinema Four D. Yeah. So like, cin- like it depends on like really the flavor and like the product, the scope of the production. Like the really the, the biggest thing is honestly like when I'm working and I'm choosing to be able to work in After Effects and keep it within After Effects, then I know I have a certain criteria that I have to hit and a certain aesthetic that I have to hit. So, for example, like Element 3D is aptly named just to be called Element. So it's an element in a scene. It's not meant to, meant to be the entire scene. Don't get mm-hmm. me wrong; that can happen. But truthfully, like, why not? There's so many other like applica- like applications and different ways and avenues to look at things. You know, like Sarah's saying, perfect example is CC Sphere or Cylinder. Like, why not? Like at the end of the day, if your perception of something that you're looking at is only going to be viewed from a certain angle, then why do you have to make more like why do you have to like kind of complicate it because mm-hmm. at the end of the day it's all about doing the simple things and doing them right and that's again like going back mm-hmm. to that adobe example that we had yesterday was the fact is like it looks super complex but it really wasn't and it's just uh, doing the small things right and timing and so on I think that it was really complex and it took you all day totally <laughs> and that's that is okay but yeah it's so like <laughs> i love watching this by the way this is Again, pretty pretty dynamic. That's a feast for the eyes right there. So yeah, so I got to work on this with Loris Alessandria and my friend uh, James Hazel. James is from Australia. Loris is from Italy. And, you know, like honestly, I really kind of, one of my favorite things in the world is to be able to work with just multi-talented people from all around the world. And, and it's just to be able to have that ability. Because like, mm-hmm. again, we're, there's no boundaries. Like we have the internet now and everybody can communicate. And as I was saying yesterday, get ready for it. Drink, because we're going to talk about community. The community is important. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. <laughs> Every time he says community, we drink. That's so good. And this isn't a Guinness. I swear to God, it is a Guinness. It's got to be like, look at that frothy head. It's so delicious. <laughs> And it's got a little so bit of that, a little bit of carbon. So it looks like it has carbonation. Maybe I'm, I'm seeing things <laughs> just because I'm actually parched. But hey, caffeine. So already we talked about what alcohol and drugs. So I know, right? We talked about <laughs> massive trips, good times. Trips. I mean, I <laughs> that's Same probably the good idea, people. Sarah. But yeah, so like essentially, let's. I guess we can break this guy up and kind of go through this really quick. Um, yeah, so Microsoft, cool. And again, as you can see here, like actually, you know what? I want to go through something really cool, really quick. Uh, there it is. So this is one of the big things. Like we're talking about labels, for example. And you know, like honestly, like label. This is like all the default la- labels that you have with an After Effects, and that's really cool. That's great, and all this stuff. But honestly, like if if I can, one of the things I like to do is I, I try to like to work with um, like kind of like customized ones, I guess. So the nice thing is like with labels, it's really cool is that now you can have hot swappable labels and that's fantastically helpful. Like one of the probably one of the biggest things, as you can see, this is just the import, uh, just like the default. And if I want to, I can go in here. I can say, like, let's grab Ryan Summers. Ryan Summers is awesome guy. Um, so if I'm just gonna load up that one, great, cool, let's use that, and then let's save, and then boom, look at that, I load up new labeling, like right I there. Just, I love your interface, like how you have the in- work, your work face squared away, because it is very colorful and just easy. On yeah, the and that's the thing, is like, you know, honestly, because like one of the nice tricks is like working with labels, or even like my own, my own tool that I worked with, Zach, love it, is like Prism, for example, like, you know, one of my favorite things with Prism is to be able to like mask color labels fast and furiously, because like, you know, that's one thing that I had a really big problem with, was to be able to go through colors, for example. Um, you know, like, it's just one of those things that's like, it's pretty crazy when it comes down to it, but like, there's just so much flexibility to actually have, you know, some custom labels, mm-hmm. like, why not? So here we go, there's some custom labels now in the bank. I can go in here, I can skip lock layers. This is the tool that I worked with, Zach Lovett, called Prism, that's on the EE scripts. 
um, and you know it's just like for example if I want to grab all these bits and I want to cycle through colors I can cycle through blocks of colors or I can go through like rainbows of colors and for me that's super helpful because again just that delineation to be able to like sort through tons of labels yeah, all the and time. Yeah you can you can select all the yellow ones. That's just instance. it right like if I want to select the label, label group boom amazing. Mm -hmm. And another thing, nice thing is in Prism, you can also select based off of parent chains. You can select based off of, you know, different color. Like you can have each layer have a different color and so on and so forth, as you can see. And the nice thing too is you can also change based off of their sort. One of my favorite things is actually is this tool is um, what we did in version two is actually different masks. So we can cycle through masks and like be able to have, if you're just working in Roto and you want to cycle through mask colors really quickly, it's super helpful. Hmm. And that's where like this is actually super, super, super helpful to be able to work with like uh, Render Tom or Thomas like, with, uh, with labels to be able to go through, let's say, mask colors. Like say, boom, there's a color. I want that group to be that color. I want this group to be, let's say, this color. I don't know what this is, but let's, let's grab it. And so when I'm working here in After Effects, I can grab this layer. And let's say if I want to look at that, there's that layer. And let's say I just even grab it. So red. So right off my, like right off, I'm looking down and I guess below my eyesight, I can see in the comp window here something that's red. So I can see that and it's going to help me be able to pick these things out really quickly. Yeah. And see, yeah. this is what I was talking about for masks. Be able to okay. cycle through masks, colors really easily. Again, it helps with Roto mm -hmm. tremendously. So Prism is like, it's a tool that I just wanted to be able to get out there and help people because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like helping everyone mm -hmm. matters. I know it's it crazy. Yeah. I go through that too. Look at how colorful your screen is now. But uh, yeah, so I guess really Ooh, quickly. That's good. Simon's like does uh, has yellow masks on yellow assets. Yeah, it's for like tying the, color I know. the graphic in with the layer of the graphic. Sure. I, that's just it, and that's <laughs> where like I got to that point where it's like, I hate this so much. And mm -hmm. as an animator, we have so much time, just almost mm -hmm. like only so amount. So yeah, so how to scratch from storyboard to animatic to animation. I'm not professionally trained, so I've never really done animatics. Animatics are just literally just still frames timed out to, like, say, rough voiceover, or uh, you know, it's it helps to be able to get like kind of the C say. So when you hear the voiceover, you actually kind of like work through that. So that's a big thing. Thanks, Sarah. You're welcome, Thomas. Notice Cheers. how we're drinking because uh, community's there. Oh, that's a tasty one. I'm either gonna one. be drunk or really hyper. Then that's that's when we find out what's in the glass. It's true, right? We'll find out. So yeah, so I guess really breaks down to is like okay, so we now have like the blue box. So you know, with labels, I can just like quickly just choose the colors that I want to be able to attach these to, and it's going to be able to help me to be able to define. You know, again, as I was saying, like when mm -hmm. I'm working with these kinds of things, I really kind of appreciate to be able to work off of let's say just really quick theme, right? So like boom, mm -hmm. colors, there we are. like just huge, like that's just massively huge. But the thing is, like, I can go through this really kind of quickly and be able to help me process, I guess, if that makes any sense. Because, you know, I'm a very visual person and I need to be able to see things that, I guess, helps to find. So, right off the bat, so I can see when I'm animating now, and I'm not saying if I want to grab the red box or I want to see the yellow box, I can see these things and how it just helps me out a lot mm -hmm. easier. Are you using, like, how long did something like this take to animate, actually? Uh, so this one in particular took me like this was just a like a day or two to be able to animate in about a week to be able to go through the storyboard for the illustration yeah, and that's the thing is like that's like when it comes down to it it's it's just understanding Did like you have some sort of animatic for this one I'm sorry if you no there's no real animatic we just had kind of different stages of what this would look like and that's the way like we were able to like sign off on the concept really easily and then this way because like it was just such a small thing I was just going to be a banner in the Microsoft blog and essentially it was like just going to be such a small kind of like extra little flash to be able mm -hmm. to give more relevance to I guess to the blog posting so it I, helps out a lot I would almost think that this final frame here might have been something that potentially like came from Illustrator or something oh totally 100% and that's the thing is like working with the Illustrator that I, uh, that I had was Loris just a beast like he just, just crushes through designs like there's no tomorrow mm. so yeah so like yeah, Microsoft, uh, I guess how to animate these things, I, mean, I guess we dive into really quickly. So you could see, like, again, like, there's nothing really crazy here. There's nothing that's really outlandish. It's literally just easing when it comes down to it, easing and hold frames. And, like, for example, like, these, like, how we're getting the streaks, again, I'm using, actually, 
it's called Rigged Box from Paul Slimmer. Uh, Paul works at Veracity Collab. I think that's the place. Is it Veracity Collab? I think it is. Anyways, Paul Slimmer. Um, actually, yeah, let's see if I can get that really quick. Um, Paul. There it is. Paul Slimmer. He's such a gentleman, too. I chest bump a lot when we're at hmm. Blendfest, the first hmm. one. It's kind of weird. Anyways, um, yeah, so Rigged Box. So, so this is just a kind of a script that he came up with to be able to help for animating and it just helps out tremendously amount because again when you're looking so at like this grow and stretch lines and uh yeah just shapes. shapes exactly so for example like instead of using echo in this in this instance i was using this and like this where like for example i used echo here mm -hmm. and like so you can see echo is the use there you can see like in this in this use case for example rig box was used here because again like i just wanted to be able to have easy enough kind of controlling but you can see, like, there's just so many ways to be able to, I guess, do this properly. Um, and, like, again, just use very, as you can see, I, I try to limit my key paths. So when I'm actually animating in the preferences, when you want to be able to view, I guess, how you see things, I typically try to, like, always no more than eight keyframes because I want to keep super, super focused. And that way it allows me to be able to kind of, I guess, sort through my keyframes easier because at the end of the day the biggest thing is if i'm going to be inundated with so many things i like to keep it simple so yeah, yeah so these just animate out and you can see like you know just trim path on that's nothing crazy right so like there's nothing nothing too crazy when it comes down to it so like you can see that it's just laying it all out and that's the biggest thing is like truthfully when animating i kind of like to just dive in head first trust me that's not the only thing that like i try to do i try to have a method to the workflow but in instances like this i can get away with it because it is such a simple thing mm -hmm. so yeah that is good so you can see like again just really i guess yeah just simple things like we can dive into this one here i guess uh where's this guy i like the golf swing too yeah I we'll like definitely go that break that down too for sure so here's a, like one of my favorite things. Is actually, this magnifying glass is actually by Kyle Martinez. Kyle came up with this uh, this kind of pseudo 3D magnifying glass, and mm -hmm. you can see like I can rotate it, and it actually mm -hmm. has almost like fake 3D depth. And again, it's like built just directly with an After Effects, no 3D, nothing. Mm -hmm. But it's how you view it using the tools properly. So it works out extremely well. Mm -hmm. So you can see right like so. <laughs> It's gonna sound silly so you can see here here's the magnifying glass and then i was able to use the y rotation this is controls again just how it rotates around but then i used a, uh, this effect called extract because i wanted to get rid of the inside of this uh, magnifying glass mm -hmm. extract is one of those tools that i use a ton and then just use the fill to be able to get to the color because at the end of the day you, you might have a client says you know what i really want that to be green mm -hmm. okay green you know, yeah. it's it's one of those finishing tools that just allows you to be able a lot faster because like I don't like to dive through panels and panels and panels, and then just get through that. Yeah. How did? Uh, where is the the bounce? There. This one right where, here. Oh, that one. You ready for it? Key Ooh. frames. That's it. I love it. I know it's crazy. It's just so simple, and that's all. That's all it is. Just key frames. Nothing special. Just key frames. Yeah. No, that's good. And you think you're like, what is your what is your big secret? And you kind of hey, got some keyframes in there. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, for example, no, I don't use Ray Dynamic Color. I really, um, I've had some, like, I've had some good experiences with it. Don't get me wrong, but when uh, most of the time I have to kind of like relinquish my files off to the clients, um, when they kind of poke around and it breaks, unfortunately, they get broken colors. Womp 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 womp. Yeah, that's yeah. literally how the keyframe curves look. <laughs> yeah. In terms of that line, so. Let's see. What's this? Tell me about it. Sometimes he said things, something to me I didn't know existed in After Effects. Uh, thanks, Jared Asin. That's Jar Jar. Show the graph editor. Sure. Do you want to see the graph editor for the ball? All right. Let's see this thing. Uh, speed graph. Great. Cool. And that's that janky mm -hmm. but again like it's one of those things like you know i look at like the speed like this i tried to like that's the speed graph as far as that goes but i typically try to use the value graph as much as possible 
Um, that way it's a bit healthier to be honest, but uh, yeah. What's the value graph? Value graph is kind of like um, the temporal interpolation, I guess, if that makes any sense. It just helps out a lot to be able to kind of like define easing. Like for example, you can see easing here and allows me to be able to like, again, if I want to be able to have just super custom easing or whatever I want, I can start breaking that down. Uh, do 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 value graph, show graph tips, go away. Uh, expression editor, I don't really want that. But you can see that if I'm going to start breaking this down, then I can start breaking it up as much as possible. I think Simon's messing with you. He's like, what's a keyframe? Yeah, come on, Simon. That's not funny. Mm -hmm. no, that's, uh, I prefer the it's value the graph. It's, it's the tattoo on his elbow. That's what a keyframe is. That's right. Uh, what's that? What if it looked like the X, Y is separated? Boom. Same thing here. As you can see. Yeah, I can see the change. Yeah, it's interesting, and I think this, uh, you know, when you see this organic motion, that's that tends to, two things catch my eyes, some of this, like, organic motion that is super unique, and the slight 3D that you're adding with the magnifying glass. Like, here we're talking organic, and then slight 3D. Totally, and, like, to be able to do that trail just using the right on. Oh, yeah. Huh. That's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty sweet. So we have uh, we have some other things that we can kind of cover. There's the flag. It's just some um, as well. Somebody mentioned the flag in here. So yeah. So if we just go into the flag, flag really easily, that's just using wave warp and just pinning it to the left edge. Left edge. That's it. I don't, and I think it's fun seeing this because you it does two things. You're either learning something or it's confirming exactly, that, you, right? that other people are doing it the same way you do it. Yeah, and that's the thing is like yeah. it's so hard to be able to show like I guess, you know, like here it is in a, a weird way. Like, you know, like uh, there's no real like I don't know, it's it's just pretty move away from my mouth. Is that better? Do you like that Joseph? Or is this better? How about this? I don't know if they were trying to yeah, do like I don't know if they want to. They they feel like it's covering your mouth, and they want to they want to see your lips. I don't know. How now, brown cow? But yeah, so pretty, pretty guess, good. Sweet. Yeah, so that's I guess this this uh, project I guess really comes down to it. Um, nothing crazy. Uh, let's go through another project I guess really quickly here. Uh, let's see here we have I like it's oh. fun like getting a kind of sneak peek at your yeah, your hard drive of <laughs> files yeah right cool. so this this is do, 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 oh do, do, do. joseph says he could hear your <laughs> <laughs> you could hear what your nose whistle <laughs> <laughs> i have a deviated septum from boxing so yeah i used to box a lot and uh, i broke my nose about five times ouch yeah, it's good times, right? Uh, where is this bad boy? Do 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 do. Maybe this guy. Do I have a YouTube? I have a YouTube channel, but I haven't actually updated it in almost over a decade now. To be honest, so you can find some really old work, <laughs> like extremely old work, when I was first learning how to uh, use After Effects, use pretty much everything. How, uh, yeah, and, and it's it's fun watching you work and seeing how you have your project set up and organized. And I think we're going to see, some, we're actually, we're seeing it sort of like live right now. Yeah, totally. So like one of the big things like I, I typically work from, like for me anyways, is like I always try to preset my, my projects, if that makes any sense. So like when I'm ever going to work with anything or I guess uh, anything in particular, let's see, Scotiabank. Uh, mobile wallet. Let's see. I'm trying to see if I can then reattach things here. Uh, it doesn't look like it's in here. Oh well. Anyways, let's look at this animation without these bits. Uh, yeah, I kind of need to be able to find those ones, but that's okay. We'll be fine without them for now. Do, 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 do. It's, like, it's like Simon wants you to vent. What's the biggest AV, AE grievance? What would like I change? What would you change in AE? That's a good question. Like, what would you change? Um, if you could, yeah. What would I change if I could change one? You are here thing? at Adobe. I think all you need to do is, like, 
write some go to over, over to somebody's desk be like hey can you fix this um honestly hey, i don't you, know what i could what i would change if there's one thing i think like i would make after effects open source if i could change one thing like i would change like i would have the core like the actual framework of after effects still be driven by adobe but i'd love to be able to see after effects kind of more of an open platform using more not necessarily just current like programming standards like for example like javascript's great it's awesome but to be able to actually interact with it i think that needs to be kind of like rethought native onion skinny would be fantastic but kind of it is there as we discussed yesterday with ccy time um yeah it's always tough because you're probably taking away business from somebody who's writing that plugin well that's the thing is like truthfully like that's that's the thing that's where the community truly drives development with an after effects i find like that's the most important thing um, that I find was an After Effects. Like a, lot, for me, a lot of people are liking the onion skinning there. Well, that's the thing. Is like, uh, what was that pl- project that we showed yesterday? Uh, let's have a look quickly. I'll show you. Again, I'm not too sure. Maybe, maybe you guys saw that or not. Uh, what was it? It was the marketing in him. That's where it was. State modified. Here we go. No, I don't Do want we notes. Have to drink. Sarah's always telling us to drink. Cheers. I don't know everything, Jardas, and you know that. So, anyways, like you onion, look at what is on, onion skinning? Just to so onion break skinning, down yeah. So onion skinning allows you to be able to see the frame before or the frame after to be able to get a sense of like distance as far as like your keyframe interpolation. So that helps tremendous amount when you're trying to like time and frame things out. Might have come from to where it's going to sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing is like it's kind of there using CCY time as you can see here. So it like it really helps out cause like for example, this is telling me where things are and where things are going. But I also I can have the little subtle nuances and as you can as you can see right here the big nuance is between the distance and how this is like how this is animating. So this mm-hmm. is just the easing out into the ease in of that and so that's the big thing is like, for example, it helps a ton. And again, it's just one of those things like it's just the finesse. It's the polish to be able to get that, you know, and it's just like, well, traditional animators, like when we like when I was animating, I was actually animating on a light table for a little while and late, like, you know, having a light table was essentially the way you worked. And so like when we had a light table and we were drawing, you essentially you would grab your papers and you would put your your keyframes or I guess your in-betweening between each paper and you would flick through. And so you'd flick through really quickly, draw some frame, flick through, flick through, draw a little bit more. And you get a sense of the timing because you're moving really quickly and really efficiently to be able, and that's where like you're able to kind of accordion with your fingers to be able to get this this sketch out. So that's traditionally how we used to do it. So like you just flick through really quickly and to be able to get that sense. And then the light table would kind of give that sense of an onion skin because for example, now I can see through the pieces of paper and that's where I was Which onion were skin. also made with onion. <laughs> no, that's not true at all actually. Not true. No. But that's the thing. That's how it worked. So that's why, like, you're just crying the whole time. Just like, <laughs> it's all going off. Why they make these pa- these papers with onions? Yeah, CCY time is native for onion skinning. Essentially, you can use it for this. It's not necessarily that meant for that, but yeah, it is a workaround. And that's kind of the thing. Is like that's why that's what makes After Effects so great because there is so many workarounds. And that's the thing that makes you know kind of what made the Flash community. Yeah, you know it, and we all kind of started. So that's the thing is like, it's the community that was building on top of the things that existed and keep growing. And that's the thing is like, it's every step of the way. It's just allowing you to be able to take something and maybe not necessarily used for that specific thing, and but adopting it for something else. And that allows you to be able to grow exponentially because now you can see what's great, what's not, and kind of keep evolving. Sarah just keeps telling us to drink. I already had a drink. I I did. I'm behind. Clearly. So, yeah, so that was like, that's how I do onion skinning. It was skin. Well, if we want to talk about. It wasn't made out of onion, it was made out of skin. My flash process. Yeah, I can go through that. Um, Let's see here. I guess let's go through this really quick here. Do, 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 do. Oh man, Dropbox. Why are you doing this to me? Somebody keeps on saying character animation, Andrew. Just as an FYI. Yeah, we can go through character animation. Um, I can go through. I can and actually then, get some like files. Like Chris is saying, like Illustrator file to After After Effects 3D. Matt's already covered that actually yesterday. So actually, if you want to go through that, 
that's definitely that's i would say helpful. yeah i'd say talk to that, that and guy. uh just so or, you guys know like there's the if you're on adobe live.com there's that lower right there's a replay button so you could watch episodes from yesterday so yeah. over and over so you could just all day long mm-hmm. listen to andrew's silky voice or my nose whistle all right <laughs> and he didn't say it was a bad thing by the way and that might be a little bad. That I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Other people have to use that mic, sir. <laughs> Mine. My uh, mic. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, so like, I'll see if I can preview this. I know it's. Keep in mind, this is on the on the laptop, so it's not going to be like super fast. But we'll see if it actually is going to like preview okay, because it is actually pretty heavy. So this is like just a little small inter- interstitial I did for like, for uh, for Nick tunes or something like that um so yeah nickelodeon so like it was just a small thing i did for a company called awesome incorporated you know honestly that's a great name i'm not gonna lie those awesome guys are pretty incorporated. yeah they're they're just pretty cool dudes it like, says hey we're super fun yeah but cool we're also dudes business and dudettes and <laughs> like honestly it, like actually when i was like kind of we had to rebrand my business or like trying to like come like to incorporate my business I had to come up with a new name and i was really hoping to be able to register but my lawyer wouldn't let me to be i wanted to call my business throw punch Throw punch? Throat punch. Oh, yeah, like throat really. punch. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's... Why not? It's better not it's better <laughs> than, like, Smash or Grandma Studios. I don't know. Because <laughs> um, where did you work? It was Cat, Fat Cat? Yeah, so I Fat first Cat. started. That was exactly where I started. I started at uh, Fat Cat Animation Studios in, New Brun- in Miramichi, New Brunswick. That's where I first, first, first started. And that's where, like, I, I lived essentially for five and a half years. And, like... You know, we had productions where, like, I had a sleeping bag underneath my desk. That wasn't uncommon. That was pretty, pretty normal. Yeah. Andrew pretty much, like, isn't that the place you pretty much, like, kicked down their door and said, hey, you're going to hire me. I will work for free. Yeah, I did that. And I will wear you down until you hire me. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of exactly. It, it, it was like, can you do X? He was like, yes. And then he learned, went out and learned how to do X, which I love that. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, like, uh, uh, uh. and that's the thing is, like, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you have to kind of take those risks sometimes. Uh, here we go. I don't have pretty throat right punch, now. not fruit punch. Fruit punch. Those are two entirely different things. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we do should do talk do. about color, character. Well, not, not today, but character and well, there's a character actually in this thing. in this thing. Actually, I'll show you a character pretty pretty close. Uh, just let this preview through, and uh, yeah, yeah, there's a little a little rendering. Yeah, as far as like character animating, I guess is there a particular spot or something like you want to see that's like character animation? Is there anything that you want like do you want to go through? I li- I liked how you were showing. Uh, weren't you showing rubber hose yesterday? Yeah, so like we just went through like a really quick rig setup for the legs. Which are was there great. any like in all honesty? Are there any issues with using rubber hose a lot or? Yeah, so like rubber hose, like it's a known thing. Like at the end of the day, like. It, uh, oh no, the motion blur is part of it. We got to keep that mm. in. Um, so like the big thing is when you're doing that kind of like, for example, um, rubber hose character rig, you have to remember that it's actually pretty dense because of all the expressions. So all the expressions are just big beasts. And so at the end of the day, like, you know, like how it kind of builds up. Are we going to see your sketches? No, there's no sketches to be had today. Um, but as far as like rubber hose, it gets pretty system intensive. So after about two or three characters, it starts to get kind of crazy. Like it really does. And that's the thing is like you have to pick. And that's where like I typically tell people like, you know, let the style kind of be defined by, I guess, the aesthetic. And uh, that's the, it's going to help tell the technical story because like, do you need to use rubber hose and everything? No. Do you need to use Duick? Not really. And that's the thing is like, can you use puppet pins? Sure. Why not? It depends on the project and it depends on the need. You never know and that's the kind of thing is like that's why i find this so good and so much fun to be able to work with you know like clients that have these demands and needs because everything's so different from each other everybody's trying to be unique and that's kind of the best part of how fun this is yeah it is a rog zephyrus it is chris huh nailed it hello from brazil awesome good to have you here I'm sure it's getting a little bit later in Europe, so thank you if you're in Europe or beyond the East Coast. Yeah, like even Thomas, like us. Thomas is like on the other side of the world, so it's super late over there. Like, and even even all my friends here from England, like for them, it's right now it's what nine thirty, nine forty at night. So for them, that's like commitment. 
do you um do you crazy, work like you're, you're just like all day all night or you just like do you burn the midnight oil you like early riser or what's uh well so the last three months i've been getting up at 4 30 in the morning and i uh so that's way too early so i wake up at 4 30 in the morning and then i go train for crossfit uh at five o'clock for an hour and a half at uh, the nice. gym that i go to called crossfit on queen street in kingston ontario those guys are amazing Callum and storm love you guys thanks and then so i've been doing that for the last three months pretty hard and then i come home and then i have breakfast well i take my dog for a walk first my dog oliver he's amazing um i feel like it's like academy war i like to think uh, but really <laughs> yeah oh man rolling dude 4 4 40 in the morning that's intense buddy i know he wins he wins the all-nighter award yeah, I wish. Uh, hey, Dan's here. Yeah, at 4, uh, 4 a.m. in the morning to be able to go weightlifting. So it, who knows the answer? So that, yeah, this was the the whole thing was like this was the, the whole animation so at the end of the day like when you're animating this kind of stuff i guess it really comes down to like the simplicity and so for example like this entire animation or like these bounce ons for example like if i wanted to go into the like here's the open and then like you know i have again i guess this really comes down to like how do you define these things and so for me like for example this this um this o shape was using actually a script from harry frank that allowed me to be able to kind of create 3d depth so you'll see here like all these black frames actually let me pull this up with labels do i like using tablets like surface pro or ipad pro actually i have a surface book four it's fantastic and i did actually some of the traditional animation on that penguin piece for that actually with the surface pro it actually it holds up really well surprisingly so anyways you can see these are all layers that are just slightly manipulated back in the z depth and you can see here it's just taking the index number and then just dropping it back and this is actually a script that's off of his site excuse me and like he was one of my very very first like i guess mentors and so yeah so this whole 3d depth thing to be able to grab and kind of make this this door thing and from that i was able to kind of create that illusion of 3d and then this character for example uh let's go into the parrot so again the parrot itself this is just using puppet pin tools and i'm using great guns tool and you can see you know i, I just have all these these are the pins for the for the current the parrot here and you can see like just the, the eye blinks separate that's right yeah totally and then again i'm just parenting that actually to and where you the even pins. have the eyes blink yeah so i see and that's the thing is just like i'm actually just not showing i just hide that layer because like oh, underneath it works yeah cc cylinder so yeah that's how I did the parrot and then like obviously here's this parrot here that has his lip sync so you can see again keyframes are on for the body and then like we have the mouth obviously so the top and the bottom here Let's see I'm not sure if it's actually in here yeah there it is the VO is in the, this one can you guess the joke so yeah so that's where like f as far as like character animation when it comes down to it like this is like one of the big things when i tell people like when i do character animation what i do is uh i act it out like literally i get up out of my chair and act it out and that's the thing is like i, I like for example you know if you hear him like what he's saying he's supposed to be like the spoiler parrot he's supposed to be crazy and so for me like it was just like you know how would a parrot act or how would a puppet act and so that's where it's like you know like i you'd go through those motions so you try to like pretend in like those little like little movements did you, little did you find muscles. yourself kind of doing those movements oh while totally you're, even while you're like animating oh yeah. totally and that's the like the, the best thing about it was like that's where you have to constantly kind of get in character so character animation truthfully means getting into character one of the old sayings for like character animation was actually the best uh the best uh actors that never seen screen were are animators because they're constantly acting behind the scenes to be able to make the scenes come to life because they get the sense of depth and to be able to go through th the f like i guess the motions what jard mm -hmm. saying is like absolutely i totally feel myself constantly and that's the thing is like you know with having an iphone on you all the time i constantly just sit on my desk and just watch myself 
act it out or i'll put on like you know put the video on my on the headphones and i'll just act it out and that's the thing is like for this one in particular i totally acted all out why not and mm. that's the thing is like especially the eyes because so much can be conveyed in the eyes and that's the thing is like you know it's so much easier to be able to like for example this kind of rig why i did it this way i know simon was asking why am i like why am i high like hiding or just using instead of like having some kind of sophisticated rig for the eyes well for me it was just the fastest because like if i wanted to have a blank i could literally just split the layer you know raise up the layer move it over and now here's a blank Mm -hmm. and that's the thing is like at the end of the day like that's so much faster than having a rig so why why bother having a rig when you could just do something so simple mm -hmm. and that's the thing is like you don't necessarily need to have a rig for everything mm -hmm. and that's the thing is like at the end of the day that's on you and that's kind of the yeah, fun part and it's kind of like figuring out where where to spend your time like totally some, some things you get away with other things you can't you know like you'll spend more time on but well, that's that the thing is like at the end of the day, that's that t totally comes down to like the use case and why are you doing certain things? So for example, again, going back to the whole 3D thing, and like remember talking about doing the index with the Z depth, as you can see here, here's all our, all the copies in 3D here. It's just boom, amazing, great. And then so over here, I was able to create this kind of this smash through. So like when he's coming through, boom, and he just smashed mm -hmm. through. And then again, I can have this kind of fake 3d look so like he's smashing through all How this is stuff that fake 3d is there are those separate shapes that are like uh they're just pre-comps so they're pre-comps oh, with the 3d extrusion yeah. that i did of these layers and then i can actually give it some rotation so like now they have that false sense of 3d right so you can see like that looks like it's 3d but it's really not <laughs> sarah's joke is hilarious <laughs> that and then joseph's answer i will say what do you call a fake noodle an impasta nice and then uh, uh anyways we're getting off track but like joseph's like noodle your business <laughs> oh puns, puns jokes guys silly still too early to be off the rails wait till tomorrow oh truthfully that'll be, that'll but yeah so simon is like i guess i try to keep the layer count down yeah like that's the thing is like truthfully uh it comes down to how much work it's going to be and for example this piece is only what five it's actually only like the full thing is only 10 seconds long so this is meant to be in between a commercial spot so really why would how do I you do, do an extrusion in in th in classic 3d uh like so if again you can, can you open that up like yeah so for example i'll show you really quick here actually see if i can i don't have the script oh maybe i do uh do i have it i do have it yay okay so here it is uh i'm gonna go here really quick so gray machine super awesome presets and i totally botched that gray machine awesome presets there it is so gray machine this is from harry frank like he is one of the original gods of after effects and actually he has the super awesome presets pack and I highly suggest everybody should download them big time because they're awesome. And Harry's a great guy and he s stands by everything. Just incredible guy. So it's Your really cool. Machine. He uh, came up with this, I guess, uh, this, I guess, preset pack. But this is something he used to do back in the early 2000s. So, for example, I have all these kind of like just shifted down because, well, I didn't want them to be present. Like, I didn't want any depth because I was trying to actually make it. Uh, below wow. so like oh. yeah exactly so like the thing is like when it kind of here then boom you can see that they have a little bit of depth so the fact was that i wanted to be able to show there's like no depth and then that's where i kind of like turn on the depth essentially so that's why everything's kind of st staggered down but for example if i wanted to take this and let's say make it like harry's preset so then i'll just grab this let's go down a few frames just as we had it previously great and then i can say let's let's see here 3d where it is so here's gray machines 3d so you can see it adds bright and con brightness and contrast and this is just a preset and so right off the bat when i go in here you can see that i'm already starting to adjust the brightness and the contrast as well as you know the index i'm slowly moving it back incrementally mm -hmm. so every duplicate i do i'm starting to make mm -hmm. an extrusion essentially in 3d space gotcha. so that works out really like just really well so in that case instead of just like one maybe i want less so i can just edit that really easily and you can see like it just brings that in just ever so much so again i'll just bring this right down let's see try to get something working that's nah, fine whatever 
And then I'll just duplicate this a bunch of times, happy days, and then we'll go back here, and you can see that now, hey, there's the 3D. Well, you know, it kind of works, but it doesn't really have as much darkness as I wanted previously. So again, that's where I can go back into the expression, and I can manipulate that with this, again, expression, let's say 4. So again, I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate a bunch of times, and you can see it's getting darker and darker every time it's extruded further. Because if I go back here, for example, let's see here if I can do this. Go back here. Ah, no, that's Zach, not gonna work. Zach, Zach Lovett says this Andrew guy's kind of cute. <laughs> Thanks, beautiful. Zach's kind of like BFFs. <laughs> uh, what else is this to me? Yeah, right. See, Sarah knows what I'm talking about. Can it be? Yeah, so you guys are doing it. Yeah, you got it. There you go. Um, can it? be done simply with element 3d by chance you can um but again you're kind of having to write kind of preset that up and that's the thing is like that's where it kind of you have to define that workflow mm -hmm. that works best for you for like in this instance again i really didn't need to be able to do what i ended up doing so for me what i ended up doing was just this way because it's faster it's more efficient and you know i i prefer i prefer this kind of workflow yeah yeah, that's good. If you have a fast machine, it's and that's the big thing is like we were saying yesterday. Excuse me, is that uh, your investments? Like at the end of the day, like you have to invest in your craft. You have to invest in your trade of, I guess, what you're doing, because at the end of the day, you're the one that has the direct impact of that. Have you used shape layer extrusion? I have. Community, thanks, Patrick. Cheers, buddy. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, I'm getting the caffeine sweats. <sighs> I can feel it just in my pores. Whew. I'm going to start turning orange. This is actually carrot juice. So uh, it looks like I got a spray tan. Uh, Simon, yeah. So I, I've done shape layer extrude and just as like Sarah the said. The chugger of computers. Oh, massively. And that's uh -huh. the thing is like truthfully, like again, pick and choose your battles. At the end of the day, like does it work for this use case? No. Does it work to be able to do a layer extrusion via uh, like, you know, Harry's kind of presets? Yes. Can I play them pre Kyra comp? Yes, I can. Uh, let's get back home. Actually, that's right. F1. Boom. Let's see. This time I am going to take off the motion blur. But you can see how much of an impact the motion blur actually has in this entire kind of process. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Preview. Here we go. Eat the dog. Uh, recommendations for starting motion freelancers. Um, what kind of recommendations? Animation recommendations or business recommendations or projects recommendations? Let me know. Can we change community? To yeah, at, at the end, end of the day. day. You <laughs> we probably we don't have enough enough in our enough. glasses to change it to at no the end of the coffee, day. Pedro. No more coffee. I can't do it. Uh, yeah, Izzy, what kind of questions do you want to know about starting motion freelancers? The 12 steps. Yeah, well, the principle is like, you know, the fundamentals of animation, right? Uh, it says 04 because that's actually a wipe transition that I have that I actually don't have uh, on my uh, on my computer at this moment. I want to know the answer to the question. What's that? 12 principles? No. Oh, I'll see here. Uh, actually, what is it? At a, at a muse museum. Oh, museum. That's right. Where at do cows a museum. go? Where do... Oh, where, where do, do they cows? just go? Yeah, where do cows go? I, I think I forgot. It's too it vague, but yes, it works. Have you worked with making things from multi displays and concerts? What do you think of a bit rate of dimensions and setup like this? That's just a. Oh, yeah, I mean, that probably course. depends, huh? Yeah, again, that's like completely dependent on the venue, uh, who you're working with. Do you typically it. work at 24 frames per Yeah, second? exactly. Kind As we discussed like yesterday, it's board. super important to be able to work at 24 because, like, when you're working at 24 frames per, per second, you can scale to, like, let's see, NTSC, you can work scale to PAL. It's just super flexible, I, I guess, framework format to be able to work with. Uh, yeah. All recommendations. Uh, Honestly, I think the best kind of recommendation for freelance, I think have a good understanding of business uh, practices and fundamentals, understanding the value versus the cost of what you create. And that's tremendously important to be able to understand your own value. Yeah, definitely. 
Because like not how hard or easy it is for you, but like you totally. just get it, get out of your own shoes, you know, big time. And you have to understand, like that's a huge part, and that's a huge kind of impact of how you, I guess, choose your clients. Because just as much as you may be hungry and starving to be able to get work, you know, starving, starving and being hungry to do work for somebody that's not going to pay you, and that's kind of like dangling the carrot. No, oh, yeah, maybe not necessarily the best. Yeah, just be smart about that stuff. Yeah, Roland's absolutely right. Uh, Multi displays and UHD are all dependent on the playback system. Again, you have to try to figure out what the client and the vendor, what they need. Because like right now, just doing a massive piece, that's like the resolution is like 7K and it's going to be made up of three by four screens. So it's just massive. And that's the thing is like, again, we had to make sure we actually had to output instead of actually mastering at 7K, we actually made it a third of the resolution because the actual playback system from the vendor isn't going to be able to handle the 7K file. So mm -hmm. again, kind of work to the strengths. You were also telling me. <laughs> yes. You were also telling me that we were talking the other day about, uh, you know, since we're talking about output sizes and stuff, and you'd always, clients would want the super high res version sometimes. Totally. But then you're also like, well, what are you really going to use it for? That's the big thing is like, I think I find I go through this a lot is actually like when you have clients that necessarily, they think ProRes, they attach this value to ProRes because it's a buzzword. Everybody's saying, I need ProRes this, mm -hmm. I need ProRes that. But at the end of the day, like when it comes down to it, I think it really comes down to understanding the value of what you're trying to create. Um, I'm saying value a lot. Um, one of the things is like, is an MP4 going to be what they need to be able to go to Vimeo, to go to YouTube? Who knows? Like at the end of the day, oh, geez, there it is. That's Pedro. why I'm drinking. This is the end of the day and this one's community. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I needed, That's two, That's I needed two drinks. <laughs> Do I direct my own projects? What do you guys? I have a I have a question for you too. Like, yes. So you're working with the client. Do you're done with the project or whatever? Do yeah. you own the files or do they own the files? Well, they paid for your time, so technically, you know, at the end of the day, like your secret sauce, how mm -hmm. you create that file, that's on you. That's what you own. You own, let's say, that expression. You own your process, your workflow, your standardized operating procedure. Mm -hmm. um, but like they are you paying. paid them for a video essentially or sorry, for like well, an animation and that's the thing is like they paid for the end product so like when mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's like going to a restaurant right and that's the thing is like mm -hmm. if you're going to have a steak do you pay for the cow do you pay for the salt do you pay for the mining operations to get the salt do you pay for the pepper do you pay for like no you pay for the end product and that's the thing mm -hmm. is like you're paying for the steak well done rare whatever mm -hmm. uh, and that's the thing is like that's that's Plus you're going to give it to them. them and they're going to have, you know, it, it uses all these fonts and blah, blah, blah. You can't give them all that stuff either. You know, the, the fonts, the plugins, the blah, blah, blah. Well, that's blah, the thing blah, is like, blah. do they own ownership to the fonts? Like if they bought the fonts, great. If that's part of the brand, great. That's part of the brand. And that's the thing is like, mm -hmm. yeah, they totally own all of that. And that's the thing is like, at the end of the day, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, get rid of that. That's amazing. Um, there we go. <laughs> but like, that's the thing is like, they that's the things like i always tell my clients unfortunately like you know you don't ask the chef for the recipe you know you mm -hmm. you go to be able to have the experience of the final product and i totally agree with evan like that's the most important thing is that you have to specify these things at the end of the day like you have to be actually very at clear. the beginning of the day yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah right. you have to be very kind of transparent in that <laughs> that you have to be this is what you're offering this is what you're creating this is what they get and if they want the After Effects project, exactly, they have to charge extra. And that's the thing is like, I, I charge typically, if you want my project files, I'll put a 40% surcharge to mm. it. If that's what they want. And again, if it's otherwise mm -hmm. discussed, if somebody's talked about it or wants something slightly different, that comes at a different fee. So yeah, so like that's, that's massively. Hi, Joe. That's uh, Workbench. Joe's, workbench. yeah, so if you get a chance, go to his Vimeo page, Workbench with Joe, and it's just incredible. Yeah, if you can bring that up, like just so much wealth of information, and it's it's fantastic. Like, this guy is on fire. Yeah, just Workbench, Vimeo, After Effects. There's like, oh, is it Workbench Productions? No, oh, no, sorry, I went with the wrong one. one. Go back, Workbench. If you have to make a flash file like banner no. animation, how do we expect it to sneak see? Um, what's the final output? Are you using Swift? Probably not. There it is here, yeah. So this is Joe. Oh, nice. Yeah, definitely show this off. This guy is awesome. Let's go. But oh, like, tons of tutorials. Like, what, if we're up to 63? Wow. Yeah, totally. 
is awesome. And yeah, that's pretty high quality production value going on here. I like it. I know. Kind of cool animation. Yeah, Joe's a great guy. Joe, you're awesome. Joe's super down. Little shout Earth. out. Super, super, super kind. Um, so yeah, mm. so that was that one. Uh, I'm gonna show this one here really quick. Yeah, let's do that one. Completely understand. No, you give me a shout out all the time, buddy. No way! Joey. <laughs> so that's Harry. Harry's amazing. <laughs> Joe said a buyback. <laughs> That, and so Harry is the guy that I was showing the, pre the super awesome preset pack from. His son Joey just said hi back because Joe work bench as well. Let's watch tutorials with Andrew. It should be a normal thing. No, I'd be I'd be cussing way too much. I'm a horrible human being. What can I say? Horrible. I think a lot of these are, you know, obviously if it's pretty nebulous, like Steve is asking about sort of like even to the concepting phase, is you just charge an hourly, like you don't know how long concepting is going to take, like how many rounds you're going to go through. Well, that, I would think. that's the thing, like truthfully, as far as like, do I cost for time in concepting, you know, there is no such thing as concepting. It's a project. You're building towards a final product. So at the end of the day, you're building towards the project together with the team you're collaborating with the client or you're collaborating with an agency mm -hmm. that's working with an end client everybody's a part of this journey together and that's the most important thing to realize is that there's nobody that's outside of this that can't have is it typically like an hourly thing though no it's if you want yeah, like there's like for me anyways i'm, I'm not going to like take part in something that's going to be an hour hourly basis because if we do something that's going to be per hour it usually ends up to be almost kind of nickel and diming and very kind of almost too specific if it makes sense because at the yeah. end of the day it just doesn't really help out that much for anybody like it just the best thing you can do is literally be upfront be honest and say look you know i'm if i'm gonna build this project we're gonna do this entire project you know soup to nuts mm -hmm. that's just the way you do it yeah that's that is good so it's just plus a lot of times video. i could imagine you're working with clients that you've worked with before you have relationships with different businesses and stuff. yeah you definitely try to and that's the thing is like at the end of the day like oh geez sorry uh like when you're working with these things like i don't know like for you build relationships you understand what everybody's doing no way that's amazing mm -hmm. i think we just crashed harry's site i hope not we didn't we didn't we i hope so trouble. Awesome. <laughs> Got a little rendering. This looks like more like an 8 bit type animation. Yeah, this totally. So, like, this was for Adult Swim. And so I was able to work again, collaborate with Awesome Inc. And again, I just wanted to be able to go over this kind of like this process of like, how do you make this 8 bit so aesthetic? So, Kit is trying to guess pixelate, or is it just mosaic? It's, I don't know. We're taking guesses. It's actually not. Um, so that's the trick. So let's see here. So here's the town. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Where can More hands this. pixelated. Do, 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 do. Okay, so. <laughs> so here's the town completely out. Like, as you can see, like, everything here with there's the camera. Mm. Completely laid out. So as again, you can see. Oh, nice! It looks like a lot of uh, a lot of camera work and 3D elements. Totally. So Patrick, uh, and again, there's a little bit of there's like 30 second delay with chat, but I think you vote for pricing by the entire project. Yeah, I'm not gonna go per day. At the end of the day, like, oh god, I like that way too much. You know what's funny is since we've drawn attention that. to it, I know it's, it's just like now it's now crammed it in here. In. But all that's going to happen is you're going to replace it with something else. Uh, something else that you end up saying multiple times, so totally. it doesn't really matter. I do it all the time, but in any case, <laughs> but in any uh, case, that's <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do, 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 do. Let's find a layer here really quick. For yeah, you do you find you end up working in the slide two up view? Yeah, you start having these different views when you deal with 3D. Yeah, I always kind of like, I always want to see what the camera has and then also be able to work with 
I guess essentially what the camera sees and then also my stage setup because like obviously the stage is going to be able to help kind of direct how this is done so you can see here's the high school we look at the resolution it's only 256 by 256 right so typically let's say this layer this high school so if we find this high school let's reveal this here so here it is here and I'm just gonna throw in a new comp here really quick and let's say you know like there's my 256 by 256 and let's say if we want to make this for actually let's say HD broadcast uh, let's get that off because we don't want it uniform or 16 by 9 happy days so right off the bat so you can see when I start to scale this what's happening is like you're starting to get this this dither right mm -hmm. and like we're like actively scaling it now so you can see like that's not what we want we continuously like rasterize that again you see like we can actually get some of that information back and so how you be able to do that is actually within the advanced so you want to preserve the resolution when nested so when you go back here big thing is like again we go into advanced to preserve resolution when nested so now this is nested and again I'm preserving this detail so you can see that like no matter what how scale I make that now there's no more dither Hmm. And what is that button? I, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with that. I'm familiar with the blur next, the motion blur next to it. But. So yeah, so this is just continuous rasterization. So uh, this allows, okay. enables like world transforms inside of this essentially to be able to respect, you know, what's being done inside this composition. And then when I have this one, for example, I can go crazy on it. Mm -hmm. But you can see now that like, now that's, again, I have no longer have that issue. Because again, if I try to dither, if I scale it, it starts to interpolate that dithering. Whereas, since this is the the look, the aesthetic that I'm trying to achieve, mm -hmm. boom, 8-bit. Boom. Crisp, clean, 8-bit. Crisp, clean, Ooh, what was this? 1988. Yeah, right? But in a cool, retro way. It's great. It's Everybody's chatting it. amongst themselves. So, yeah. So, yay, missing footage. That's right. It's a missing footage it. dance. But that's all pixel art, huh? That's just no it. mosaic or no mosaic, nothing. Or anything. Exactly, it's just taking extremely small files from Photoshop, bringing it in After Effects, and just preserving the scale. When that's fun. That's it. Uh, let's open up another fun project. Let's see. Actually, I think I have resin right here. That's the one I worked with Oliver. Uh, animation. Let's see. Maybe finals. I don't know. Uh, let's see, shot one. Here we go. Bum, 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 bum. So yeah, I guess. Saw this. So this is, for example, this is like a really kind of like boredomatic, animatic, whatever you want to call it, essentially. So you can see, like, this is where you typically have, you know, your rough timing. So that's just where like you can start to kind of like break it up to be able to get an idea of what you're trying to build, and that's why again, see, say, you'd be able to help people realize, or your clients, to be able to look at what they're seeing and be like, okay, this is what I'm getting. See, say, they get to see visually impacting as well as hearing what it looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, do I take on boring projects just to pay the bills all the time? <laughs> Not gonna lie, all the time. Do you ever increase your rate because it's a super boring subject? <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, this is going to be really... Like, honestly, it's like if you're about to turn down a job, you're like, you start to think, how much would it take for me to actually do this? And then you just throw out that number. Yeah, and that's the thing. Is like, that's kind of like, that's sometimes you never really know. And that's the thing. Sometimes you have to throw it out there. Sometimes you have to kind of like throw that risk to for the reward, I guess. You know, it's important to be able to like value yourself and value your time, but it's also a part of that that process. Is what does that look like for you? Mm -hmm. Random question: What do I prefer, working with two or more monitors, or ultra? Um, I like having two monitors, and I like having two monitors. One because I have my back home and my home setup. I have a Cintiq, uh, so it allows me to be able to do my frame by frame, but also helps me to be able to give notes. And actually, one of my favorite uh, tools is actually using this. I don't have a tablet, so get ready for some janky illustrations but typically when I'm, I'm reviewing work from people like for example if I'm doing this I want to be able to say hey you know this right here this really sucks 
Uh, see this? Let's change this up. Hey, let's let's move this over. And this is a fantastic tool called Epic Pen. I love this tool. It is so good. Epic it's, Pen, and you draw it anywhere on the screen? Yeah, exactly. So I can just do anything, anywhere. And so, oh, I love it. Like, this is PC only, I'm sure. No, right. it's Mac and PC. What the what? So it's fantastic to be able to just kind of mock up, like just help with like, what do you production. Call it again? It's oh. Epic Pen. Cool. So that definitely helps with like note taking and sharing. And another tool that I use a lot is called ShareX. And so, for example, if I want to like you know to share these notes with my Illustrator, I can just boom grab it, and then I can just go in and then like in whatever chat program I'm in, I can just go go into that window, and then you can see how it's on top of everything. I can just paste that, and there it is. So there's my notes. Cool. So I can just share that off. It's fantastic, especially when I was doing MoGraph mentor and teaching. It was really helpful to be able to work with, be able to show, like, to be able to kind of iterate really quick. What I think is interesting, and kind of going back to your setup, because you use a Cintiq. I mean, do you know many, like, motion designers that are using Cintiqs? Yeah, so a lot of, like, again, going back to my background, uh, tra all traditional animators, I guess that's my heritage. That makes sense. Um, the heritage when I'm working with people, like we all kind of have like Wacom backgrounds. So like we all had Cintiqs, we all had tablets, we all had all those things used instead of. Yeah, so it depends like if I'm collaborating with multiple people, like Frame.io is great, but tr traditionally when I'm working with, you know, two or three less, like two or three people, I don't really need Frame.io. You know, at the end of the day, I can just mock up something really quick. Um, Frame.io is fantastic for the end client, but I find Frame.io's UX gets a little difficult for the end clients and they kind of have, they have a hard time working with it sometimes. And that's where Whipster's great and Whipster's iterating. Whipster's like the price scheme when they kind of updated it, kind of scary, not gonna lie. But, you know, honestly, like Frame.io, I love Frame.io because the price point, the value you get is amazing. So yeah, so this is uh, resin, so I guess, yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, let's see here. You can see how I, I was able to animate all these bad boys. And you see like, for example. I think. I just used trim path and then used this dot here, for example. Yeah, how are, how are you getting that circle to follow the line? Yeah, so that's just using like a dash, for example. So if I wanted to add more, you know, if I wanted to add a lot more here, let's say actually, let's do it this way. We're going to add another one and then this goes down here and we'll add another one. Can't find it. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like one dash. That it's one path with a dash on it that you're that's animating right. the. And I'm not. I'm not even animating it. That's that's the beauty of it. Is like I'm actually just using, um, right here as you can see, just the offset. So the offset is just using mm -hmm. expression. So you can see like, okay. so for example, here you can see. Oh, very cool. And you can see like that's yeah, just, that's it. Mm -hmm. So again, try to like be generative as, as and non-destructive as much as possible. Yeah, that totally works. I would have done that to the h the hard way, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah I totally like, would have. But that's the thing. But is then like, I'm thinking that bend and that on oh, the curve. Oh, it's gonna be so hard. But totally man, perfect. And, and that's the thing is like offset. Exactly. So like again, we're going back to what Simon was saying is like limiting layers. Like you can see, like I could have had so many much more layers just to be able to make all these paths mm -hmm. kind of. But essentially, I was able to like minimize the amount of effort that I actually had to do, and it's a lot more work than people think it is. That's it. Uh, my direct question: The After Effects CC does it support material texturing natively. What's the texturing? I, I'm not too sure what that is. Skyhawk 77. <laughs> Jason coughed. Yes, Jason coughed. You guys are really with it. You guys are really keen on what's happening in this room. I know. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Top of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, keen. And uh, you know, to, uh, to the point of what Chuck's saying is basically like, you know, and like, do you fall back on the same old tricks because you're just super busy? Like, I think we all do. Like, oh, that's totally. what I think the value of honestly this these live streams are. Like, just having this up on a second screen or something while you're working. Oh, totally. Because you, you're easily saying plenty of things. That, like, oh, time saver. 
I mean, and the well, path of least resistance is just doing things the way we've done them. Well, it's because you're so indoctrinated, to be honest. And that's the thing. It's like, oh, it's only Windows. Uh, it's only so indoctrinated because, like, we've done it so many times. And, like, that's part of the, uh, like, the, the, uh, the value of, you know, like, people like Joe that have Workbench or, like, Harry Frank that, uh, you know, that really comes comes down to what's the most important things like understanding that you have to keep fresh constantly having to like sharpen that tool because you are the carpenter you are the tool that has to make that you know that world-class chair yeah it depends on what you're trying to do for like material texturing are you talking about element 3d or are you talking about cinema 4d connection i'm not too sure i follow excuse me sorry Things are animating, boom, plane, and that's again going and back then to I the noticed, whole. Didn't I see a 3D plane? Well, that's a little. That's probably just a couple frames, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's like it's playing off of like what we were doing yesterday, where it's like you know we we anticipate we have the hold frames, and then boom, we mm -hmm. have transition, we have an animation, and then again like anticipating, and then boom again like using that same kind of technique, and this is just using a few frames. So like literally just popping right over so like one two three four five five frames and then it's all in the settle and didn't i see um maybe in, it was in your actually in your demo reel on your site wasn't a plane coming straight out at you yes yeah, so that was using that was like again one of the first times i was opening up cinema 4d and there was a design that i found and i saw that and i was just like what i have to be able to figure out how this is done because mm -hmm. i wanted to do something really cool so i'll show you really uh i'll show you it's right where is she so this is like my most popular dribble, sh dribble shot i've ever done so anyways i saw this originally on on dribble from this this designer and i saw it and i was like i literally had like this flash of inspiration i was like i have to learn how this is done and like i want to do something really cool really different so i created this animation off of that so i was able to like i was trying to like think what could break that kind of fourth wall as we were discussing yesterday to be able to make you know that 2d flat design but make it animated yeah, no, that's good. And, and that's what happens. It's like, hey, you know, I want to do this. What do I have to learn to do this? Sometimes totally. it means 3D. Sometimes it means like, you know, learning a new tool, a new technique. And that's the most important thing is like, as you were discussing, is like, yeah, you totally, you hit that way where you need to be able to learn something new. And sometimes that adds value to the, your process. And that's just part of it. I'm at the point where I'm trying to figure out I'm shooting on a lit green screen cloth backdrop or emitting green light onto a reflective backdrop. I've seen both. I've done both. Loris VFX, admittedly, you're a genius. Thanks, Loris. That's sweet of you. Let's, uh, can we take a look? Actually, there's plenty of good, cool things there. Like, you were also working back on that Illustrator file. Not to, ooh, that's also sick. Uh, we did it. Yeah, so if we go back to this Illustrator file, literally just kind of break it all up and, like, you can see like again how much i guess work there's still left to be broken down on this but essentially yeah this is kind there's of no there's no secrets here huh right no there's <laughs> that's just it like it's literally just breaking it down as much as possible and like literally making it work and trying to make it as work as best possible so for example like you know it's just literally breaking it down piece by piece and no it's not charming it's not amazing it's, it's not, not glamorous beautiful. this is the non-glamorous side yeah, of it, you know that's just but what this it is. is that's what you do it's like this this is why it's awesome to be like you know i'm freaking i'm gonna turn on netflix or i'm gonna turn on excuse me adobe live totally and that's just and it like uh, part of it is just, just to zone out work, listen to some music why not and that's awesome. the thing is like that's that's sometimes the beauty and the, and the value of working from home i guess you can put on some sweats put on netflix in the background and chill out and you know essentially this can sound horrible but do some mind-numbing work like literally it's it's beautiful that way that you could have some fun and you mm -hmm. know that is part of the fun i think is to do stuff like this and again just step by step breaking things up making it work does uh does after effects have anything like related to like a bump bump map uh, there is normal maps, but it, again, supported by third party. So like normal okay. maps are great. Like uh, Andrew Kramer touch, touches on this a little bit in his in his blog. Uh, to do the beauty of two D three animation can be interchanged and make things work for a shot. Very much true. Hi Mike. Hi buddy. I I'm t I tim I typically think actually you know what I think for you I'm just guessing and kind of off of Simon's question about like naming layers. 
Yeah. I, I feel like people like independent designers don't since they're working on they're not sharing their files with anyone there's less of a need uh, to yes no options. I'll be honest like I'm going to have all these layers here you'll see like in my my layer panel like I'm going to have a ton of layers when, by the time I'm done breaking up with this but truthfully is I'm still going to go back and name it something like for some of this stuff like for example this a lot mm -hmm. of this I'm going to just do that technique that I just showed you in that resume IO piece like it's literally going to be a dash on a path that's using an offset oh yeah done and that's the thing is like I can just take that element literally put on its own layer and so now like I know by doing it little by little not using explode shape layers not using anything literally just going layer by layer and I can start to think why am I what's the best way to do this what's the most efficient way that's going to be non-detrimental to the project but also scale because what's going to allow me to be able to do is going to be uh, let's say a client comes back says I was totally wrong instead of UHD I need 7k uh, instead of this I need to be able to have an a animated SVG like that constantly changes you never really know and like for me it's always working with the clients to be able to help them hit their deadlines understanding what they need to be able to uh, I guess address that as much as possible yeah, that's what I was. So, and then Gerardo talks about release to layers. You might lose the names, but definitely in After yeah, Effects, you'll I'm, name things. I'm not a big fan of releasing the layers. As discussing yesterday, it's like I, I like to go layer for layer. I, I may be old, Isn't there but like explode layers, explode shape layers. The from Zach Levin actually Zach's in this chat right now. He uh, like that's a fantastic tool to be able to help. And like for something like this, this is where definitely I would use explode shape layers. Again, I just like take these layers, you know, instead of having them on each their individual pass, I'll just paste it on one layer. Paste it on layer boom. right here. And then again, I just start, I'm just breaking it all right down here. to make it work. And like, again, it just allows me to be able to have a good, good understanding of what I'm creating, why I'm creating I it. Think. But yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we're almost done this actually, surprisingly enough, which is awesome. Can, do you mind moving us to the other side? Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll put us on the left-hand side. Right. I was, like, pointing at things, but I think I'm in the way. Ooh, wow, that's cool. That was sweet. At least my arm's, like, not going to actually get cut off because it actually <laughs> cut off the frame. I mean, it's caffeine like sweats. It's good times. Is it sweats. better to name an AE? Um, depends on your process. Um, for me, no. Well, and I was just thinking, like, uh, you know, in terms of y you do a fair amount of, like, color coding, so that, that helps immediately to identify exactly. layers. Exactly. Exactly, it's super important to me, anyways. Uh, do do here we go, pixels. So that's pretty much it. So again, we have pretty much all of our layers. So once I break up all the layers like this, what I traditionally do is then I go back. So let's say this is it, and then cool. Let's save this up. Happy days. Oh, I don't want to save that one. And then we go back over here. It's just interesting because some things, you know, there is no shortcut. There just isn't. There's no. Anyway. So um, here's this. And then this is where like, I start looking back and forth here to see do I have everything in place. So we can see we're missing one thing over here. That's because that's in front. So we'll try to reorganize things as best as possible. Is that what I think it is? Boom, boom, boom. Nope. And again, we could break this up. Sylvia said she should have separated the layers for you. Sylvia is actually the one that did the designs <laughs> for this. She's, as I said yesterday, Good thing she's you're here. I was trying to take take credit for it. <laughs> she's an amazing designer. Like I'm so grateful. She's such yeah, a wonderful. You person. You know, you're amazing friend. layers, but you, you're amazing at uh, amazing illustrator. But you know what? Name your layers. It's true. Naming layers is a Sylvia, name your layers. That's okay. Just kidding. <laughs> but that's where it's... You're it's, awesome, uh, and I really appreciate her color scheme, because I think it's... Oh, awesome. she's so good. Like, it's mental, like, mind-numbing how good she is. So you can see, boom, there's that layer. boom ba doop ba -do. Mm -hmm. Global renamer in After Effects on AE scripts could potentially batch rename. That's cool. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, so I'd say Sylvia, that's name your layers. Up. This is if your your Illustrator doesn't name their layers, Sylvia. 
someone picking on her. Poor Sylvia. She's probably like the I nicest feel bad. lady ever. Now. She is. <laughs> like Sylvia is the nicest woman ever. She's so sweet. I love Sylvia. And like she's working up over at Bloomberg and she's just such a sweetheart. Mm. Yeah, she does rock rolling. Like honestly, at the end of the day, Sylvia, I can't appreciate I, I can't say how much I appreciate you. You're amazing. Like Cheers. Cheers to Sylvia. Everything to her. Like she does good stuff. Yeah, I still have some Cheers coffee. Yes. Cheers. Yeah, so we can get you more if you want. That might be disastrous, I won't lie. <sighs> That's good Guinness. It's starting to like really hurt my bladder. Uh, so yeah, so I'd say this is pretty much ready to go. And uh, so yeah, so this is my EE prep layer. And then let's start to bring this thing in. So I guess first things first, you know, I'm honestly going to go into my Dropbox. This is my own kind of Dropbox. I have a ton of things. So here's my sample project file. This is what I use for all my projects. I'll go inside here. This is my template After Effects project file. Happy days. <laughs> she's going to name layers, but she's going to use people's names, so it's not going to make any sense. Like Bill, Todd, Amy, Patricia. Uh, that's, that's not bad. That's actually <laughs> she's like, fun. I named them. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> Uh, let's see. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Go, go. So, to answer facts. your question, um, Lafitry, in terms of naming, changing Flash to Animate, because Animate, basically, f what was Flash is now Adobe Animate because it can publish to many different uh, uh, platforms and technologies now. So, SWF, HTML. Yeah, that's like by uh, far SVG. one of the coolest things, actually. And and whatever comes next, so that's the idea. Just use it to do probably in particular more sort of frame by frame animation. Might be what you use it for. I know people that just yeah, a lot of guys just draw in it and animate in Adobe Animate. All the copies of After Effects. Yeah, you can copy and paste pads from after uh, from Illustrator. Illustrator. Yep, no. you can. You have to make a new shape layer and then copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and it's because it's all paths. It's all Bezier, so it, it makes complete sense why, as well as too. Come on. Is there any elements in this design you'd rebuild in After Effects? There is, Kevin, and actually that's what I'm going to show you is like the whole purpose of like why some layers I've actually kind of kept grouped and some layers actually I haven't. Um, because again, it's going to be able to kind of have that purpose and that process and what we're trying to create. Another way, there's the, the copy and paste and there's also creative cloud libraries. I mean, if you, if you cared to use that, you can drop logos in there and stuff. Totally. You know, pull stuff in quickly. Yeah, sure. Why not? You can totally copy most. Like, I'd probably say ninety-nine percent of all layers from Illustrator to After Effects. Because again, like, if you're looking for like, for example, like, if we're looking at the Blend tool here, yeah, let's be honest, the Blend tool is not going to be able to copy and paste. That's kind of a given. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, in in all fairness, would you really want that to be copied over and pasted? No. And that's the thing is, like, you want full control. So, you know call spade a spade and work it that way yeah i think you do I, I to answer i mean you could answer kevin's questions talking about anything in that design that you'd rebuild in after effects oh totally and that's the thing is like that's 100 percent what we'll do i mean you you still kind of need that element in there just to use as sort of a template or you know reference is that right like would you import the illustrator file and then you have a graphic there that's just kind of as a reference but totally eventually you draw you know well that's just it own. and that's the the whole point of having like you know like when you're sitting down in your design or you're animating that's where like a boardomatic and animatic or whatever you want to call it you know that's where you have your your idea your kind of the essence of what you're trying to create so like that's exactly what i'm going to do here so i'll have this and i'll export this out and i'm just going to export this out i don't want multiple screens so I'm just going to export this out. This is going to be my animatic frame. So essentially, like, I'm just going to save that out. And we'll just bring these onto the desktop. We got we to gotta do Sylvia justice for her design. She's like, make it rock.
like make it move. Where's the make it move um, uh, function or drop down menu? So like make it make I it wish move, make it make it move around cool like. Uh, where is it? Guide layer. Oh, Oliver. Thanks for joining us, Oliver. Thanks, buddy. It's a little later there in Europe. Yeah, he's coming. He's hailing from England. Create shapes from vector. Create shapes from vector. Hmm. So now we. Oh have yeah, I guess. Yeah, you could. Does that work pretty well? Creating shapes from vector. Oh, totally. That's kind of like uh, the big thing that I find. That's where I I'm in love with. And I guess that's the real workflow here, right? So, where is that? Create shapes from vector layer. The end, just to, cur just to, uh, there's no storyboard, right? No storyboard. We're just gonna experiment and see what will happen. Exactly. Based on what you guys wanna see and whatever. So you can see like what right off the bat. Like. So you, like right off the bat, you can see like when we create the vectors based off of the, I guess the shape or the vec the shape space off of the vectors, you can start to see some of the inherent problems that we're gonna run into. And that's okay, as long as we have these base shapes here. So really comes down to it is again, we can start breaking those down as, as far as what we need. So typically in this instance, this is where I'd use explode shape layers if I can. So this is my BG. This is where I start laying, like labeling everything. So I know this is my BG. I wanna make sure that I open up the workspace that I have. Yes, please save. Yeah, sure. Once, once this project's done, you can have all the project files you want. Nice. Okay, cool. Bum, 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 bum. So that's that bad boy. We'll make that BG. So we know that's a stack here, so we're gonna call this stack03. We have music playing in the background, even though we don't hear it. Just FYI. No way, really. That's so cool. So you could be like, just chilling. I'm kind of bobbing my head to the music that I can't hear. <laughs> uh, kind of terrifying. Do you mm -hmm. hear things? Do you hear things what? often? What? Are we in the way? We're probably in the way. Do you mind moving us to the uh, right side? Ready? Ready to animate? and do it with the screen transition. <laughs> and time, go. <laughs> Andrew Apple Pie. Why Apple Pie? Why is his, la why is his last name Apple Pie? Uh, just because he likes it. Apple. I guess that's the word. Yeah, I just like, I just like Apple Pie. That's sure. Why, that's why it's his, his DJ name. <laughs> sure, why not? I love that, don't you? <laughs> like, I just like it. I have to say my favorite pie is pecan pie or sweet potato pie. Oh, Oof. Pecan. Oh, sweet potato pie is pretty good. It's That's a unique one and good call. I'm into it. Like it's so good. So you can see like we're just breaking up all these layers here. There we go. I should be an actor. I should act like I have rhythm, maybe. I have no rhythm. Until I get really drunk. Well, what do you think we've been drinking for the past hour and a half? Hey, oh, but seriously, he's it smells of alcohol in here. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. So, this is as you can see, this is like the unedited video, uh, version of this. You're, you're, you're working with a newer laptop, yeah, which is cool. I know Matt earlier today is like a 2013 Mac, Mac, <laughs> nothing is Mac, nothing special, Mac. yeah, so. But I hear you, like, obviously dealing with any sort of video. Yeah, like, that comes down to, like, as we were saying earlier about investing in your tools and your craft. Like, at the end of the day, like, it's super, 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 super important. What's this? What is this? What is this? Uh, yeah, which yeah. laptop do you prefer using for After Effects? Um, honestly, the fastest one. Yeah. At the end yeah. of the day, like, invest in your tools as much as possible. <laughs> um, how does the panel prism work? Or you already covered that. Yeah, we kind of already went over to that. I'll break it up again probably tomorrow when we start breaking it I just it like up. how it sits on your screen just adds a splash of color to your screen, to be honest with you. Totally. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fun. Like, at the end of the day, like, 
for example, if I'm just going to like color by layer type, so you can see this is all based off of all Illustrator files, or I can change all the colors, or I can cycle through colors here. I'm curious as to who is, uh, I mean, Chris is using an Asus as well, and I'm, or an Asus, is that how you say it's it? It's Asus. Asus. Yeah. Asus. Uh, I'm kind of curious as to how many people are using gaming laptops. Uh, I, to be honest, I think it would be a lot more than you suspect, to be honest, because like that's the thing is like the power of mm -hmm. game laptop. It makes it so democratized. It makes it so cheap to be able to like the like the entry uh, the I guess the the garner to entry level of to be able to hit this market. It's, that's what it really comes down to is understanding, I guess, what you have to work with. I guess uh, at the end of the day, like for me, it's the most important thing is like cost efficient. Is it going to be able to be value add to me in my, my process? Am I going to do something fun? Is it going to be awesome? You never really know until you get into it, really. Yeah. Uh, to answer your question, lo Loft a Tree, uh, editing videos, Premiere, After Effects. Do you prefer? Uh, and I'll you're saying YouTube videos. And uh, we are, just a little shout out real fast, but we have Rachel Nguyen's going to be up next with Jason Levine. And I. Th are you guys working in Premiere at all or doing some yeah, so there you go. So you'll you see After Effects now, thirty minutes. We're in Premiere Pro for editing YouTube videos. Yeah, and that's the thing is like it completely comes down to like what's gonna be uh, what's more efficient for you and your kind of your process. Like for me, like I like it's gonna sound horrible, but I like I love editing in After Effects because I have uh, so much more tools at my hands, my tip. Mm -hmm. Like I can literally just have like key, I could have text, I could have everything at the, my fingertips and i know i can do that in premiere too but for me it's I, i'm not familiar with the key, keyboard shortcuts and so for me in after effects i can just constantly just crank mm -hmm. through as much as fast as much as possible hi rachel hi jason mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so yeah just breaking things up um doo -doo -doo. Is that bad boy? What would be cool is if the tune you're humming was is exactly the song that they're hearing. Right. Is it Chris? Are we moving? To, are we? Are we moving to the beat? Maybe you're not hearing. I hope so. Everything. Maybe not. He's like, no, Paul. Let's go to stop it. <laughs> stop. <laughs> God damn it, Colhagen! What are you doing? <laughs> no. We have voices. Put the cookie down now. <laughs> it's like hidden party tricks. I can do Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice. Dusseldorf. What is that coming from? Dusseldorf. I can't wait to see how this animated Lion Ford stuff has been complicated. Gets to Premiere Pro much faster for playback. My tricks possible there. Totally. And yes, Ryan. There's so many pieces, but that's okay. That's kind of the fun part, to be honest. And it really is. It's kind of nice when you're given given a project and you're like, you know what? I get to just freaking put on my headphones, yeah, listen chill. to some music, and just like get into the zone. Just, you know? That's totally what it's all about. You, you don't have to think, right? You, just you don't want to. <laughs> that's the thing. Is like, the you more you get into it, just put on a favorite Netflix series or whatever. Adobe Live. Get out of the chopper now! I'm gonna burn in hell for that now. That's good stuff. Use eyeballs more than using parenting. Sure. Use eyeballs more than use parenting. Why not switch them off in your time? Uh, right now, I'm just trying to like. I don't want the eyeballs because like the eyeballs not necessarily. Like, I see everything. I don't want to see everything, so I'm gonna like solo each layer. So as I'm going, I'm trying to keep my focus to be able to be on whatever layer I'm working on. So I can solo these on off. I don't want them. So I can just go. I can just go layer for layer, and it allows me to help. Don't you guys love the? I know. Chris mentioned something about crashing, but don't you just love autosave, like crashed, like co recovering crashed files? Yeah, that's it's definitely nice. a lifesaver. Like I, I'm not saying it always works perfectly, but remember the days of when 
you'd crash and lose all your stuff. Remember oh, that? Trust me. I still remember those days where like, or even when you had like a rendered fail and you'd have the, like that sheep go off. And then by that time you'd no. maybe have like a memory leak and then it crashes after effects oh. and you're like, <gasps> no, uh-huh. <laughs> it's the worst feeling. Totally. Yeah, it is. Uh, blue circle. We are, we're getting into the Zen meditative, meditative process of this work now. 60% of the time it works every time. Oh yes. And just a little shout out, if you guys are on Adobe Live, there's a contest we're running. Since what? we talked about Premiere Pro, it is Premiere Pro related, but uh, lower right hand corner, there's a template file, but you could also enter this contest, make it impactful. It's just basically posting with that hashtag, you could win $1,000 gift card, Creative Cloud, some mentoring as well. So just make you guys aware of that. And by the way, some other cool things are going on, by the way. If you ever want to see some of these folks live, by the way, we do have the Adobe Max conference coming up. Uh, by the way, so I'm kind of curious if anybody's going to be there. Adobe Max. Wow. Oof. Is that the uh, eat estimated? So you can go to max.adobe.com. And uh, we'd love to see you guys in Vegas. That is going to be October 18th to 20th. So that's what that was. Yeah. I've seen that around. It's big. It's a big dealio. I always wanted to go to Max, but just never had the opportunity to yet. Well, <laughs> you're. Uh, it's all about knowing the right people, and unfortunately, they don't give us any tickets to go out. <laughs> That's so do, I know, like, do I know the right people? <laughs> there are some people in the company that just have free tickets. I'm like, right, how does that work? Sense. Yeah, that's exactly as Joe was saying. The best part working in two Dropbox, that's mm. 100%. I don't have Dropbox installed on this computer, but if I'm working, I always, always, always work off of my Dropbox folder. And the reason why is because you never know what's going to happen. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's like back up, back up those as many places as you can back them up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, let me know if anybody's going to Adobe Max. So if I know, do insp- expect you there. Bye, Steve. Kirby. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. Uh, dotted lines. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Uh, Ryan, thank you for submitting to the Make It Impactful context for Project Felix, which is a 3D compositing tool that we're working on. It's currently uh, it's just in beta right now. So it sounds phenomenal. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. So really quickly, I'm going to show you this really cool thing. So, so for example, Why all caps, just because it's easier to read. Yeah, just to be able to have like that lower kind of a bit of, of like my eyes when I'm reading things. Also, how I hand off. Again, it just helps to be able to have communication in the, in the project. So people who are like picking up the project or dropping, like when I'm finished with this, I'll I'll post the Dropbox link so everybody can have at it. But uh, for example, like these bar chart little graphic bits. So like typically when you're doing this kind of stuff, you want to be able to, I guess, sort it out one for one. And honestly, in this instance, it will be best to do it for one for one. As you can see, each each layer has its own kind of like a gradient, I guess, in this cha- in this sense. Mm. But from Cinema Spice by Mikey, and Mikey, is, he was actually, he did one of these events. I forget when he did it, but uh, he actually did one of these events, but he came up with this, this you know, preset essentially to be able to help doing custom bar charts. So mm-hmm. if I want like up to one or seven, I can have like a ton of, 
Oh, jeez. Right there we go. So you can see I can actually like, crank these out. So you can see... However many different bar graphs you want. And like you can see... Nice. Can you control the... And then you can control the height of each bar exactly. graph. Exactly. So you can come in here. Whoop. This is awesome. So again, this again, like what we were saying yesterday, to be able to save time. So like now I can have this kind of pretty much this effect. I can drop it down. I can kind of replace, and I have all these functionality control. Mm-hmm. I dig it. So that is super cool. I love it. It's one of those things like, you know, it makes a massive difference in my my workflow. So Project Felix isn't isn't like Cinema 4D, but what you could do is you could make something in Cinema 4D and uh, bring it into Felix and render it in a in a scene so make it looks like oh, it's really? sitting on a desk. No way. Photo. Yeah. That's awesome. So it has, actually the render engine is V-Ray. I was going to ask, is it V-Ray? Because like I remember seeing like a, it was part of the announcement was that I was going to be working with that. I was like, what? Yeah. Which is kind of nice because I mean, it's, it's free. V-Ray is kind of expensive otherwise. But yeah, there's no modeling in, in Felix. I don't, you know... I'm, yeah that's mental but so if you think about it like rendering is going to get to the point where it's it's realistic like hyper realistic as as soon as machines get faster and everything too. well that's just it we're hitting that convergence now right and that's the that's thing what i like would want like rather than buying a photo like let me buy a model that's perfectly you know gives, gives me all that control of a of 3d and all, often 3d is what designers want to learn Typically, it's like high on their list. Oh, massively. <laughs> yes, Andrew Embry is the best. Thanks, Chris. You're sweet. Thanks, Chris. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is texturing, so you can add, you can add textures and materials and reflections and lights, um, all that good stuff. So check it out. Actually, I could just. I could just show you guys, honestly. Why am I talking about it? I actually have it here. Yeah, I want to see some of this action. So here's like a really good example actually. Can you still see my screen? Yeah, okay. So like one really cool thing that I try to use and try to work with is like for example, when I create this and like transform this into a shape layer, again this is kind of really defined by the design. So if you look at the design here, just of this element in particular, what's kind of cool is actually, let's actually go over here and find that one. Uh, that's too much work. So let's go back here. So if we look at this one, for example, this little blend shape that we have, and we see here, like when we mm -hmm. look at it, we have all the individual steps, but we'd also <coughs> see this this kind of fade effect going off here. And that's based off of just like, you know, the appearance and the transparency. So you can see like there's a linear kind of a ramp to be able to create that look. Now, there's a couple of ways to be able to like kind of, I guess, skin this cat. So in this instance, most people, for example, would want to use a mask right off the bat that's usually most people go want to use a mask so you'd go up here make a mask and then you know happy days you, you can make your mask so you can see it's a square I don't want a square I want an ellipse so we'll go here no oh, I don't want windows button either go away <laughs> anyways oh no wrong button go away there you go so you can see there's my mask and then you know I can take that mask I can subtract it away happy days and then I can feather it off right and I can get almost a somewhat pseudo same look aesthetic that was kind of like uh, from before which is really great don't get me wrong but at the same time it just doesn't feel it doesn't to me like it doesn't give me much control because like now when I'm dealing with a mask I'm in the mask I have all these bezier handles and you can see like oh, I don't want to grab this one ah oh, no I grabbed the wrong mm -hmm. one I want to grab this one okay oh I got it I got it great okay I'm ready to work okay let's let's move this over here. oh no damn so that's where like I don't like there's different ways to be able to skin this cat so like one of the ways to be able to skin this cat instead of working with masks let's let's be smart let's use a linear wipe why not and we can get the same look, the same effect, right? So we can see here, boom. So right off the bat, we can start to actually dial this in, which is hella cool. So again, 
we can start dialing this this effect this we can kind of have this generative look and now we can have so much more flexibility in this design and again if the client comes back and says i want to do this or i want to do that we now have this complete flexibility which is awesome so i love doing it like with a linear wipe or my favorite effect of all time if it's not using extract which is this layer i love extract if it's not using extract i'm using always this one and this is uh shown to me by my friend yesre uh yesre droza jr who is maltanen online awesome 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 after effects artist he was the original the first guy that taught me how to use after effects and i'm in forever in debt of that man i actually when i was what 22 23 and i want to learn after effects really 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 good i, I found his website i just stumbled upon it Mm-hmm. and uh, I found his website and I want to learn from him and so he offered like consultation it was like $50 an hour to be able to like talk I call him up on Skype talk to him and what I ended up doing is I called him all the time and mm-hmm. instead of charging me we just kind of like became really good friends and one day I was like what are you doing this weekend he's like oh I'm, I think I'm gonna go see a movie he's like actually you're gonna pick me up at the airport mm-hmm. so I flew to Poland to be able to meet him and be able to work with him and oh, wow. yeah so you can see what I'm doing now with this this whole effect that I'm just using circle. And you can see like now I have the same kind of effect that I had the mask. But mm. now I actually have I can dial it in a far easier than I would have had with the mask. And you can see that now I've created that that same look and there it is. Completely independent. Mm-hmm. And I can completely ad- adjust this aesthetic. Much easier. Which is far easier. And again, it's just like why would you use that one tool when there's other tools and available and options? Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things that I, I keep going back to. It's just huge. That is pretty awesome. We're getting down to prior last. I uh, wish. I, I'm minutes. 32, actually, not 23. I'm old. <laughs> Flip those two numbers. I know. That's, a, that's just it. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I mean, like, if I'm Flip else, a, okay. Or just, for me, double double that number. What? No, I'm joking. Let's be honest. You're not 64. Maybe. Oh, no, but I was saying <laughs> double the original 23. Oh, that's pretty good. Really? No way. You shut your mouth. 43. You're kidding me, really? Mm-hmm. I'm not kidding you. How many handstand push-ups did you do yesterday? Just three. Just three. <laughs> let's get to, let's try to try 46. <laughs> 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 I wish. Man, congrats. I that's wish. amazing. Thanks, man. This is, I'm not really, it's, it's what we have a nice uh, filter on the camera. You know, without that. Yeah, filter. right? Like the Take that filter. off, I'm like... <laughs> but that's the thing is like mm-hmm. I love is like how wrinkly my face can get. So about yeah, three minutes away. It's like Rachel just walked in. Good to see you. What's up? Yeah. Hey girl. <laughs> Rachel Nguyen coming up. Uh always makes me feel frumpy. She's always so stylish. And uh we'll get into some it's premiere. So fresh, and, fresh, fresh. Uh, maybe even get some fashion tips. I could never pull off those earrings. Yes, you could. You could totally pull off some hoop rings. I had the big big loop earrings. (laughs) 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 But yeah, so I'm just breaking up files. Oh, thank you. MPB Mike is older. I'm younger than you. That's awesome. I did 20 push ups. Congrats, Chris. Carrot juice, Spartan races. You do. Yeah, you CrossFit. You're always going to stay young. No, I hope we're gonna so, do yes. we're gonna do handstand push-ups later once oh, once we're off camera. Yeah, I totally right. <laughs> off, <laughs> <Yeah>. camera. <laughs> off camera, off uh, camera. But and maybe we'll do it on camera. But all we're gonna do is flip the camera <laughs> over, and we're just kind of yeah, exactly going up and down. That's not horrible. <laughs> yeah, <it> totally works. <laughs> yeah, so this is the process, the nitty gritty of this is the beauty of animation. It's not beautiful. It is beautiful, and just to. Just to recap, guys, I'm glad we have you tomorrow again as well. I think we could always uh, show a little bit of Project Felix since we just talked about totally, it. Totally, yeah, Ooh. definitely show a bit about it because I actually am really interested because yeah. like, I saw some of the stuff take that they had that's popping up. And it'll take like five minutes, like piece piece of cake. Cool. Um, Hit me up. I want to see this beauty. Yeah, and even everything you're doing with these little tips and tricks, you're like, oh, yeah, by the way. And it's like, you know, little tips that go a long way, which is huge. So. I hope so. And scripting. I don't know if you do scripting. How much time we got? About two minutes. All right, let's see this Project Felix. Oh, you do want to see it now? Yeah, totally. All right, let's do this. Two minutes. Let's switch to me, actually, if you don't mind. My friend, here's Project Felix. You can search for it online. All I'm doing is I happen to have 
um, my library panel. I'm just like loading up some mountains apparently. It's kind of high res, which is nice. But that's just going to serve as my background. There's already pre-made models and in kits and all this fun stuff. Let's grab a Mobius strip. Why not? Drop that in there. It kind of doesn't look like it necessarily goes in this scene, but if you notice, we'll just take a look. Because right over here, let's grab, I know that's kind of behind my head, uh, create a light from image, right? So, and this is happens to be outdoors. For, it, it already does a good job. There's not even any material with it, but I can easily drop in some material. What should this be made of? I really like this, like, damaged glass. It's kind of cool. And then we can always, like, render it out. Give it a second. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Again, that's just the beginning. Whoa. You guys get the idea. We could always do more later. All right, Andrew oh, cool. Emery, we're uh, just super happy to have you here, my friend. Thanks. Always fun. He even said he might even pass out some uh, some of these project files. Oh, yeah, Possibly definitely. tomorrow. So join us, same time, same place. Be 1 p.m. PST. Stick definitely. around for Rachel Nguyen and Jason Levine. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much, man. Thank you.